What's going on, everyone? I'm Hunter Dolo here from Philly Insider Podcast, and today, you can see by the title, I wanted to talk a little bit about Matt Muirling. So I've mentioned him a number of times during the live and how he's just been hitting the baseball hard, and even when he wasn't having success, he was putting a really good swing on the baseball. So I decided to look a little further into that, um, go on Baseball Savant, go on Fangraphs, and kind of look up some numbers on him, um, and just what kind of, what his approach has looked like at the plate, and just how well he's really been hitting the baseball, because you can see the results are there now his numbers are improving and yeah i just wanted to kind of take a quick look at it um he's an aggressive he's not really going to get on base a ton outside of his hits but man is he hitting the ball well um so i'm not too concerned about that and look i, I think going back to last year i mean he had that four for five night august 31st against the washington nationals it was in dc and that was kind of right when september calls were happening and everything after that he kind of you know, I don't want to say he took the job and ran with it, but he positioned himself in a spot to where coming into spring training, he was the favorite for the job, even with Odubel Herrera coming back. So um, obviously things did not go as planned. Like he had a really good September last year, but obviously things did not go as planned this past year. After the Mickey Moniak injury, obviously Veerling got the job. Just to keep in mind, guys, on the first day of the season against the Oakland A's, um, he didn't have a hit, but he did have two, two hits, not hits, but... Um, two batted balls that went over 100 miles an hour and also had a 95 mile or 96.2 mile an hour sacrifice fly, which helped this extender lead the 6 1. Um, and, and that was actually kind of huge because it was 6 to 5 at one point. We had to get some insurance runs to ensure the win there. So, um, look, I mean, that was kind of an example of what happened most of the year. The, the A's had their defense in the right place at the right time. I don't know. I guess I saw something in the scouting report that told him he was going hit, to hit the ball hard and hit it to right field. So, um, But, no, on a real note, I mean, it, that's what it felt like. It felt like he was getting very unlucky more often than not. And I don't want to say that was everything, right? Like, look, launch angle is still a part of it. You know, approach is still a part of it. The count that you put yourself in. And, and there's a number of other factors too, right? It's not it's not just that he was hitting the ball hard and just getting unlucky some of the time. But I do think some of it was kind of unlucky. Like, I think, I think we could have kind of seen his luck changing eventually, like it is kind of now. Um, but Tim Kelly tweeted this out on May 5th, and this was like six days before he got optioned, that... He had a hard hit percentage of 50%. Usually if you have that high of a hard hit percentage, like one out of two times, you're probably getting a hit or two every game. I mean, that's pretty insane. Like he said, Tim Kelly said in the tweet, the 182 average, not indicative um, indicative of how he was hitting at that point. And now, now I think the results are starting to show. Um, look, in June, he's played 15 games, 11 started. Hitting 311, um, and he's slugging 533. He has those three home runs and a double as well. And those three home runs were huge. I mean, he had the one off of Hader, obviously. Um, him and Bowen went back to, not back to back, I don't think, but both of them hit home runs to help us get that win. And, you know, the other two came in that Nationals game. We won eight to seven, which he was just crucial. And one of the home runs came in the ninth inning, too. Um, so they're coming in key situations. I mean, he really is a good situational hitter. And it is odd because I was at a game where he had a bloop single. It was like, 61 miles an hour I think and it was I mean for that to kind of get him going out of all the hits he's had it was it was really odd but sometimes just to see the ball kind of bounce your way literally and figuratively it, it does boost your confidence a little bit because when you're when you're going good it feels like everything is falling for hits when you're not going good it feels kind of like he felt before he got optioned in May then he got called back later and um I think it was late May, early June, no, early June. I think it, I think it was like June seventh. But um, yeah, right now he is third on the Phillies in average exit velocity. So you have Bryce at ninety two point eight, you have Schwarber at ninety two point seven, and Beerling is right up there at ninety two point one. He was tied in that mark with Wilson Contreras and Ronald Acuna the other day. He recently moved up. That was he was thirty second. Now he is twenty third, tied with Carlos Carlos Correa and Byron Buxton. And also with his hard hit percentage now, it's 49.3 still. Um, he would be, if, and this is among qualified hitters. He's not qualified. He doesn't have enough at-bats. But if he did, he would be tied with Carlos, or not Carlos Correa, with Ronald Acuna Jr. Or he'd be right above, actually, Ronald Acuna Jr. and Manny Machado. And I think he'd be tied with Gary Sanchez. So definitely some good company there. You know, obviously Gary Sanchez hasn't been the best this year. But, you know, the other names definitely have had some pretty good seasons. Um, so, and obviously they've had success in the past. So that's definitely kind of company you want to surround yourself with. Um, also mentioning this, like expected batting average is, um, I think it's up to 287 and expected weighted on base percentage is now up to 362. So that also is kind of like, 
an indication of how well he's been hitting the baseball and just the results not being what you'd normally expect them to be. I think before he got optioned, he had 17 hits that were over 95 miles an hour. Only four of them, or no, only three of them dropped for hits. Again, like just, I don't want to say it's it's an anomaly, but really crazy. I really did expect more of them to fall for hits. So, um, and I think this is something I've emphasized with a number of players, but especially Veerling. You look at his poll straight away and an oppo percentage, and right now he's up around 15.9 poll, 63.8 straight away, 20.3 opposite field. So he takes the baseball where it is pitched, pulls his hands inside on the inside pitches, takes it opposite field on the outside pitches, and he just really tries to hit that right center field gap, which is one thing you're really taught to do just as a nice contact hitter. And and he gets power behind all of it. Like he has power to all, all parts of the field. So it's really nice to see like these young guys, especially Beerling, contributing at the bottom of the order. Obviously, Stott's kind of going cold a little bit again. Um, but it's nice to see Beerling continue to do this because I, I I understand why he was optioned because I think you needed to get him the reps in AAA. I'm totally not against it. Um, would I have liked him to stay up here and kind of get, you know, get like – get the results immediately for sure. But also like that is a confidence killer when you're hitting the ball that well and it's just not dropping. So he went down to AAA, had that huge, huge Sunday game where I think he was like three for five, three for four or four for five or something like that. Um, and then he got called up right after that earlier this month and he's just been killing it. I, I think that's kind of going a little, not unnoticed, but it's definitely not being talked about as much with June Schwarber has obviously been insane. I mean, I, I could talk all day about that. Um, Bryce has been on a tear. I mean, obviously now he's hurt, but was doing really well. Um, yeah, I mean, we've just had we've just had a number of guys hitting hitting the baseball fairly well, you know. And I think it's going to be important for Reeling to continue to do this. And I think the results are sustainable. Um, I think that's something that I want to emphasize with this is that, you know, this also isn't just he's not just getting lucky right now, as we saw earlier in the season. He got unlucky, but now it's starting to like his efficient his efficiency at the plate and just his like fundamental swing is really starting to produce those results. And I love to see that. I'm really happy for him. And shout out Troy H. If you guys know him on our channel, popular subscriber for us, um, does have the Veerling profile picture. And he's had it since the start of the season, before the season probably, I think even started actually. So props to you, man. Um, you were on the Veerling hype train a while back. And yeah, he's he's still hitting the baseball well. And you know, defensively, I mean, I think you could do a little bit better, like in just in terms of reaction time and all that. But I'm not super concerned about it. I don't think it's poor by any means um but yeah i mean that's all i got on beerling guys it's going to be important for him and other guys to continue to step up with bryce's absence and i think the big thing is castellanos just being able to be that that presence in the middle of the lineup because you have to have someone who pitchers have to work around around a little bit and be careful with and i think that's what bryce provided and bryce takes advantage of mistakes you know castellanos did have a four hit day yesterday a couple of them were, were lucky but sometimes you need those like i said you need some of those to fall to just gain that confidence back and I think if Castellanos can start hitting like he has in the past, um, we should be okay. I, th I still think we'll need to acquire someone in the outfield at the deadline because you have – my assumption is Veerling – I think Veerling is going to continue this. I think he'll be the center fielder moving on. Schwarber's in the left. I think Castellanos DH is while Bryce is out. And then I think you need someone else – probably need someone else in the outfield um, at the deadline. Like there's, there's names being thrown around. Uh, like Tyler Naquin, someone obviously, but you know, some names will be more expensive than others. We'll kind of see, feel it out, see who's available, but you know, definitely need another bat in the lineup. Um, at the least a bench bat and yeah, other stuff. We'll, we'll talk about all the trade deadline stuff. Obviously bullpen is a need, but just talking specifically about the lineup right now. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope Matt Beerling continues this. It's been awesome to watch. Um, hope he continues it up. Well, hope he starts to swipe a few more bags on the base pass with his speed um, and just get better jumps. But yeah, that's all I got on him, guys. So, yeah, ring the bell. Keep this up, Matt, and uh, God bless y'all. Peace out.